Hello everybody, welcome. Today we're going to discuss some of the most popular nutritional hacks, supplements or medications that are used to fall asleep or to improve the sleep quality. We're going to go into the science and see which ones work, which of them work for me, and which one in my opinion I will suggest to avoid. As always, please consult your doctor before taking or stopping any medication that you're actually taking. So let's start. The first one is iron. This one is not often discussed, but it's actually very important and it could be easily fixed. Iron deficiencies and insufficiencies are associated with restless leg syndrome and periodic leaf movement during sleep. For some people, that means that they wake up during sleep without knowing why, or they just go and affect their sleep quality and wake up without noticing and then fall asleep again, affecting their sleep quality in general. If you are like me, this actually was one of the causes of my sleep problems, and it was easily fixed by supplementing with iron. And the big thing here is that we need to separate what is a deficiency and what is an insufficiency, because for me, I was not deficient in iron. So if I will go to a doctor and they will do a blood test, the doctor will say there was no problem with my iron levels, but I was actually insufficient. That means I was not, I didn't have enough levels to have the best health quality and sleep quality. And then I decided to start supplementing with low doses and it really improved my sleep quality in just a few days. Women, vegetarians and vegans and people with gastric problems are at risk for iron deficiencies or insufficiency. So if you belong to this category, please be aware and do what is needed to get your iron properly. The second one is magnesium. And I know there's a big trend that people take magnesium before bed, especially magnesium threonate and magnesium bisglycinate. Let's put it clear, having good levels of magnesium is good for all aspects of your health and life. To do something, you have to start working today. And while magnesium supplements are great and really help many people and really help for, for sleep, I will also recommend to really put a lot of effort and focus to improve your nutrition, especially by taking more vegetables and greens. Just think about it, the chlorophyll molecule, which is what makes plants green, in the center of this molecule, there is a magnesium molecule, which means every time you're eating greens and with things with chlorophyll, you're consuming magnesium. And this is really important. So improve your diet, take more greens, take more vegetables. Also, for example, dates are quite good in their sources of magnesium. You can include some dates in your life, do it. Adult men need around 400 milligrams of magnesium daily and women around 300 milligrams. A recent systematic review reported a positive effect of magnesium supplementation on sleep efficiency and sleep time in general. So, so at least for me, taking the supplements and just increasing the amount of veggies and vegetables I take in my diet, I start doing even some spinach smoothies in the mornings and they really help me with my sleep quality. So this is something you can start doing today. Number three, this is melatonin and many people take it, but I would say that everyone should be careful about it. Melatonin is a hormone secreted in the brain that regulates sleep. When you see sunlight, melatonin production is suppressed. The opposite happens with darkness. That's why I always recommend everyone, first thing you should go do is go outside and get sun. This is recommended by Andrew Huberman and many other experts in the sleep field. You should go outside and get sunlight. And when you're close to sleep, avoid lights, avoid having so many electronics with a lot of light because you want, this will help you a lot to fall asleep and have a better quality of sleep. While melatonin appears to be mostly safe and not addictive, there are certain issues of why I don't recommend to take melatonin. The first one is studies show that many common melatonin supplements have significant differences in the real concentration to that that was labeled in the bottle. This is a serious problem in many countries because of the lack of regulation with supplements. Second, I have taken melatonin myself and many people have reported the same. The first time it works great, but then over time it stopped working. Either you need more dose or it just the effect is not as good as the first time. And number three is that many people take melatonin and yes, they 
make them fall asleep the first times, but probably it's masking a real problem. Probably it's covering what's the real cause of your sleep problem. In one of my last videos, I was discussing some of the 10 possible reasons of why you may having a sleep problem. And I would suggest to please check this video before you consider taking melatonin because maybe there's something else that is actually causing it and taking melatonin might help you a few times but we will not really cure your sleep problem and improve your sleep quality overall. So I will suggest to avoid taking melatonin and if you really want to take it just use it for a special occasion for example if you travel to a different country and you're suffering from jet lag or you're a little bit nervous or a very special occasion but please do not use it as a daily sleep aid because there might be other things you can do first and that have better health benefits than just taking melatonin which at the same time we have seen that might be that the dose you're taking is not correct Number four, glycine, which is a common amino acid and neurotransmitter. It is safe to take at low doses and it appears to help in sleep quality, especially those with severe insomnia. Always ask yourself why you're not getting enough glycine from your diet. But anyways, if it helps, it appears to have very low drawbacks or any repercussions at low or moderate doses. Number five, Valerian Root Supplements. This one has helped me a lot. It's a herb that can be taken as a tea or a supplement. It is commonly used for its sedative and anxiety reducing effects. It is safe and not addictive. But so far, I haven't seen anything about pregnancy, so please avoid it if, if you are pregnant. For me, this one is great. It has helped me a lot. I don't take it every day, but I use it as a sleep aid when I want to fall asleep faster, if I'm a little bit anxious because of the day. It does help me to fall asleep faster, to relax, and to fall asleep in general. I also have it near my bed, so for example, if I wake up in the middle of the night for any reason, maybe to pee or a sound or something happen, it helps me to fall asleep faster again. So I will recommend this one, so give it a try. And the very important thing is, at least for me, it does not make me drowsy the next day. So I can take it and the next day is just great for me. I have read that for some people, this reduces the amount of sleep time. This is not the case for me. I can sleep great and I know other people that have taken it and what I have read from many people that does not affect, but there are some reported cases that it, that does happen. So be, please be aware and see what is the effects on you and basically just experiment with yourself and see how you feel the next day. Number six, apigenin or apigenine, whatever way it's pronounced. It is a flavonoid finding chamomile tea. It helps reduce anxiety. For some people, it helps to fall asleep, probably by calming the anxiety. I have tried these isolated capsules of apigenin or apigenine and have taken it myself and I will not recommend it. I re didn't really like it. I didn't get like tachycardia, but you know when you take something and your heart is not behaving the right way. I was feeling something like that, nothing so too bad, but I just didn't feel good about it. That was my own experience. Maybe other people have better experiences, but in my opinion, I will not recommend it. But instead, we can just go directly to the source, this chamomile, chamomile tea, whatever way you pronounce it. Um, they're actually very good. It helped me for me to relax a little bit sometime before close to bedtime, three or four hours, not so close. Please do not drink in an hour before bedtime because then you will wake up in the middle of the night to go to pee and that will just not be so good. So just take it, take directly the tea, don't take the supplement, this is my opinion. It appears to help people to fall asleep and to improve their sleep quality in general. Number seven, GABA which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. It is, appears to be safe and well tolerated, but not enough studies are available to which extent it's safe and to which doses. Some studies have shown it helps in sleep and anxiety, but others show no benefits at all. This one has been recommended by some people in the internet. Now it's getting very popular, but I will be cautious. I have tried GABA myself and it does make me drowsy regardless of the time of the day. And while this could be useful for falling asleep, it could be that the next day I still felt a little bit drowsy and I didn't really like that. Maybe it can help you as a boost 
to fall asleep better. And I know people take GABA for other reasons, but at least for what I couldn't find, it might be safe at certain doses, I couldn't find any clear protocol of how much to take. Some doses go between 20 to 300 milligrams. So please be aware that there might be a different range that is benefit for you. In this particular case, I will suggest to consult your doctor if you're thinking to take GABA so you can find the proper dose that could work for you or, or maybe just avoid it in general and try all the other things that we have talked in this channel to improve your sleep quality. Number eight is barbiturates. These are potent drugs used for many applications. Some doctors do prescribe short-acting barbiturates for sleeping. I will highly recommend to avoid them. I know some doctors will just prescribe it without even doing a deep analysis of why you're not sleeping properly, of if you have mental problems, if you have physiological problems with your nutrition, the amount of sun, the amount of caffeine you're taking. Some just prescribe it right away without even thinking about it just to, because it will help you to fall asleep. But they are not good. And I will just use them as a last remedy. And if a doctor is prescribing it for sleep, you should really discuss with the doctor why and why you're not other options before. So please avoid them unless it's really necessary and that doctor have really good reasons to prescribe for you. I know they're prescribed for other mental problems, but maybe before you even consider taking, try doing some lifestyle changes and improving your mental health that maybe will be better. Barbiturates have been shown to be addictive and people who stop taking them can feel withdrawal syndromes, which are really bad. I know some people have taken barbiturates and they stopped taking and the effects were, were really not good. So before you even consider or your doctor consider, please discuss it properly, do your proper investigation and see what if it's really the best for your specific problem. Really think about it because it is not something you should play about it. And many doctors don't even tell you're taking barbiturates because maybe you heard of the word before, they give you a drug with a different name and you don't even know what it is and you say barbiturate. So please be aware of it. Don't take it as a first line, but rather just at the last remedy after being discussed deeply with your doctor if he, he or she believes that it's the best option. But in my opinion, there are probably hundreds of things you can do before that that will improve your sleep quality and the need of a barbiturate will just not be there anymore. So in doubt, try to find a sleep specialist in your area instead of taking barbiturate because probably it's not the best option. And this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Please let me know in the comments if you're taking any supplement or any medication or you have changes or you have done any changes in your nutrition that have helped you improve your sleep and sleep quality in general. Let me know what you think about this video. Please subscribe as I will be releasing more videos of how to tackle the sleep problems from different parts of your life that you may not know about it. And there are many resources because sleep is the best supplement, the best improved, the best life changing habit that we can do to improve our quality of life. So thank you very much for listening and I wish you to have a good night's sleep tonight. Thank you very much.